is it possible for something that, when done well, to look so majestic and easy, yet actually be incredibly difficult to even attempt, let alone master? We're talking, of course, about the stroke of butterfly. And yeah, I can see you nodding along with me because it's a stroke so many of us avoid, myself included, because it's just so difficult. Well, that is my mission today, to help you, James, and you guys to make swimming butterfly a little bit easier. We've got a handful of tips to do so. Essentially, the butterfly stroke is the same as the front call stroke. Your arm is gonna move through the water in the same way. The big difference though, is that you're gonna do both arms at the same time, rather than alternating arms. Yeah, and therefore, you're gonna be having basically double the power through the pull phases, both hands come through together. That does come with a caveat though, because it means you've got to get both of your arms out of the water at the same time for the recovery phase. Now that requires good timing, flexibility, and strength. So we're gonna address all of those. But before we do, hit the globe up here to subscribe to GTN so you never miss any of our videos. Well, I want to begin with the simple yet important element of the butterfly stroke, the kick. Now, this is not exclusively about the legs. In fact, it's actually really important that your torso and your hips drive this movement in order for your kick to be effective. Well, dolphin kick requires body undulation, a wave-like movement that starts around the bottom of your rib cage, goes down your hips and your knees, and then finishes at your feet. Note though, the dolphin kick is not knee-driven. Well, if it helps, think about your shoulders as almost instigating the movement, and this will then encourage your rib area of your torso to be driving that forwards downwards movement, which will then be followed by your hips, and then finally your legs. And once it reaches your legs, that downward pressure of your legs driving you forwards will also naturally help you to lift your chest, ready for that next kick. So it's all one long balance. And if you think about trying to activate and use your core and your glutes, those are the muscles you need for powering this movement. And you'll know if you're getting it right, because you will start to feel a little bit of fatigue. So to isolate this movement, you can kick on your side, your front or back with your arms either by your side or extended out in front. Try to avoid using a float as this could actually restrict that natural movement and put too much pressure on your lower back. Don't worry if you're not moving forwards, feel free to use some fins to help get the feeling and help with that forward propulsion. But putting the kick together with the arms is the tricky part and it's all about timing, but we'll come back to that once we've addressed the arm pull. As we mentioned earlier, the arm movement is very similar to the front crawl pull, but the challenging part is the recovery. And if you get it wrong, it can upset the next pull. Ultimately, you don't wanna bring your arms too high over the water or drop too low once back in the water as you'll upset that forwards momentum. As your arms enter the water at the front of the stroke, try to keep them fairly shallow, just under the surface and resist the temptation to bury your head low. Instead, press your chest down, which will in turn help raise your hips and return you to a horizontal line. Be aware this will require a degree of shoulder flexibility, but ultimately it'll help with saving energy in this potentially energy zapping stroke. It's all about keeping your momentum through the water. Sadly, this is a stroke that's difficult to break down into its component parts because of that momentum through the water. But you can do single arm drill and you can also add fins to get a feel for the proper motion. For the single arm drill, it's best to keep your spare arm by your side so it doesn't interfere with the movement. You can even opt to breathe at the side for some of the time, but try to lift your head forwards when possible, as this more realistically replicates the full stroke. There's also the chest press drill that, even though it doesn't actually require your arms, still focuses on the movement of your body in relation to your arms. Stretch your arms out in a slight wide position and gently press your chest down and then pull it back up. There really isn't a kick here, but you should feel a ripple or undulation travel from your upper torso all the way down to your feet. This should be done very slowly. You aren't trying to get to the other end of the pool quickly. You can also use a snorkel to keep you from having to lift your head to breathe. And now it's time to address the vital final part of the butterfly stroke, the breathing. And it is hard to put it on its own as it's going to be dependent on timing because ultimately you're needing to lift your head up in front of you in order to breathe. And this is going to require support from your arms being in the right place and the rest of your body in order to make it possible. If you get it wrong, well, you will know about it. 
So the setup for your breath actually begins at the front of the stroke. As you establish a hold on the water with your catch, your hips will begin to slide forward and your body naturally lifts with your pull. This is the opportunity to lift your head and breathe whilst your arms pull past your torso. You need to then get your head back down before your hands start to reach past your shoulders on the recovery forwards. This all helps you return to that horizontal line. And note that as with all breathing when swimming, you only want to lift your head high enough to get your mouth clear so you can get that breath. Lifting your head any higher is going to push your hips lower and make the stroke harder. And as much as the breath becomes part of the rhythm of the stroke, it doesn't mean that you have to breathe on every single stroke, because still it is going to require more effort lifting your head that much higher. So opt for every two, for example, is a good way to start. But admittedly, that said, butterfly is a very demanding stroke on the cardiovascular system. So it's quite likely that you're going to start to really demand that oxygen. And as a result, it's equally fine to breathe on every stroke, which you'll probably be doing by the end of the length. It's time now to put it all together and this is where timing and rhythm become essential, coordinating your arms and your breath and your kick. Although your arms produce most of the forward propulsion of your stroke, it's actually the kick that will make the most difference to the smoothness and efficiency of your stroke. Each full arm pull should be accompanied by two dolphin kicks, one at the start of the stroke and the second towards the end of the stroke. The first one will come naturally as your hands enter the water and your chest move forwards and down. This will instigate the hips and then the legs to follow. The second kick takes a bit more thought, but it is essential in helping lift the arms out of the water for the stroke recovery phase. It needs to come in as your arms reach the midpoint of the pull and finish as the arms exit the water. Now there are a couple of quick drills that can help with this on top of the single arm drill that we've already mentioned. First, the Biondi drill. Do a couple of dolphin kicks in a streamlined position underwater to build up momentum. Perform a butterfly stroke underwater, bringing your head up to breathe when your hands pass your midsection. Then recover your arms underwater. You can take a quick break once you finish each stroke. And second, the Diamond drill. Float on your stomach in the water, use a snorkel. Position your hands together in a diamond shape at or just below your belly button and push back out to the sides of your hips. Do a single dolphin kick right after you start that press motion. Start slowly to really feel the rhythm. As you get more in tune with it, build up the speed in your press kick action. And then finally, it's time to put the stroke back together. And technique really needs to be the focus here, so you want to keep it nice and short. And actually, swimming butterfly at a decent pace will make it easier to get this. So just start by doing a few strokes at a time. Do them well, and you can swim the rest of the length out front crawl to recover. Yeah, again, fins are a welcome addition when it comes to butterfly and getting a feel for the stroke. Just beware of becoming too reliant on them. <laughs> yeah, is that you, James? I mean, how have you found this so far? Like, your butterfly is a, is a work in progress, I think it's fair to say. It's still pretty challenging but i'll keep working on it yeah well you guys let us know how you found this and how you're finding your butterfly progression do share in the comment section below and give us a like if you've enjoyed the video